yes sir okay man sir uh, you can start the recording recording is on now good morning everyone and good morning uh, dr nilesh kumar mehra sir and okay. our iqac uh, head dr mehan sir so today we have the expert of nano medicine dr nilesh mehra sir from the naipur ahmedabad so i heartily welcome to dr nilesh mehra sir and on the behalf of isf college of pharmacy it's my privilege to introduce dr nilesh mehra sir dr nilesh mehra sir completed his b pharm m pharm and phd from the dr hari singh or university sagar then completed his post doc from usa and currently he is work he is working as assistant professor in naipur hyderabad so without taking much time i welcome to dr nilesh mehra sir for his expert lecture please sir and upload your slide thank you dr walak ask for me for a nice introduction about me that uh, i am dr nilesh mehra working as assistant professor in department of pharmacetics naipur hyderabad so it was a great pleasure and i would like to thanks full to the entire committee of uh, isf family isf moga to give me a chance to share my thought on the nano medicine in respective of to the ophthalmic so i am going to share my screen okay sir i hope the screen is visible for you yes yeah, sir visible and this is my presentation please confirm it okay sir it is visible you can continue yeah thanks for uh, once again i would like to thanks to isf family so uh, first uh, i will just uh, give you one announcement that this year in 2023 the nif ref ranking was announced and uh, naipur hyderabad has successfully secured the first spot in the nirf ranking that's the secure number 1 position in pharmaceutical science pharmacy category so that's a uh, one uh, news from our very congratulations sir for your entire team for that great achievement yeah thanks once so i am going to deliver a talk on nano medicine of thelmics So this is a one disclaimer and this presentation which have been uh, not neither related with the any naipers views and policy i have taken the data from different uh, sources scientific journals regulatory guidance and the scientific data available on the google as well as the us fda and some regulatory agencies bodies so let's we start about the ophthalmic product as i have a experience about more than 3 years in the r&d for successfully from i can say it from lab to the commercialization of the all uh, simple as well as the complex ophthalmic products along with that i have a one a more year experience in the us fda where i had explored on the emulsion with the one projects that was sanctioned from the us fda so as we know about the ophthalmic products we have been seen in the market the product is available in as a form of eye drops previously those eye drops as we can call is only the simple solution so that those are the commonly manufactured ophthalmic product in a solution form or those uh, that do they will be filled it in the container that has to be squeezable to allow delivery of the drop of single drops or double drops into the eye they could be stored in the ldp bottles along with the tape they have it. and these ldp containers they are easily squeezable but are also permeable to the volatile component compounds so you can see it here the product is listed here also like first example you can see it the rastisil this is the cyclosporin of thelmic emulsion it is packed into the rascule this kind of the single use rest uh, uh, packaging container we call rascule Here another durazol that is the one example of uh, emulsion. 
another Simbrinja, that is a combination of the two drugs that we call fixed dose combination. So it comprising of rinjolomide as well as the brimonidine. Another adjunct that is the suspension form of the brinjolomide. So products that is also one example of suspension. So these are the products which have been available in the market that generally we call in a complex ophthalmic products. Rather than other products have been available like uh, some uh, HPMC based uh, solution, those are useful for artificial tear kind of that. Now coming to the another like novelty or the nano medicines. So these are the other nano carrier system in the state as the figure has been taken from the our latest publication, including of liposomes, bilosomes, deformable capacity like that bilosome, which we call ultra deformable bilosomes, proglycome, proniosomes, proglycosomes, and the trans ethosomes. Now I'm just giving the overview of how this does it, this ocular drug delivery have been evolved in this uh, era. So if we started this kind of the optional product like 1875, it was called like eyedrop. Eyedrop that I just spoke about the simple solution. They have only the one or two or three active uh, ingredients uh, along with the excipients. So like for example, the fresh tear or the suplox kind of that. Then we'll come into the picture of like ocular inserts in 1974. So those kind of the inserts that we can use, for example, of we have been uh, those uh, inserts, ocular inserts are available in the literature, even though in the books, book chapter also. 1982, it was come in the era of like a suspension. So the, those product, they are, those API, they have been a problem or those are solubility associated problem or challenges that will be converted into the ocular doses form like suspension doses form. Then we will move from the suspense and we, the scientist has been thought about to develop off of some kind of the gels. So that the era of gel. In latest time, when we enter in the 2000 era, so that including of a nano medicine, like a nano emulsion, for example, of restasis, Durajol. These are the two examples of uh, nano emulsion. They have been kind of a all in water emulsion. Why? Because we have been introduced like the problem with the solubility of the API, suspension then convert into gel and then move out uh, to the emulsion form. Then another implantable kind of that, we can be implant of some the device or the, some kind of that, uh, the API containing kind of the, uh, like for utic in case of the ocular implant. So we can be implant easily. In 2022, like some kind of the, uh, the uh, novel, novel things like uh, we had made some kind of the uh, lenses which we have been incorporated of the drug material also. Uh, as we know about the contact lens has been come in the picture previously also, but they are simple ones. They have not come uh, containing of any kind of the therapeutics agents. So let me talk about the eye is very, very delicate organ and is it associated so many various that we need to be rectified it. That's why the problem is associated. The main challenge is to the deliver of a drug or the medicament by crossing of these different various. If you can see it, this is the one latest picture which we have been published in the General of Drug Dealing Science and Technology. So you can see it, the blue box. The blue box is indicated for the static barrier. The dynamic barrier we have been indicated by the green box and the intraocular barrier that have been like for example of vitro barrier. It has been comprising a protein like and fiber, ocular fluid, blood vessels, retina. So these are all different eye and associated ocular barrier. They may be, they are just creating any uh, problem to cross the uh, drug once we applied, topically applied the drug, uh, eye drop into the, after installation into the eye drop, into the eyes. So let me talk about the complex product. What does it mean by the complex? Everybody is talking about the complex, complexity and complex product. I just giving the, how does it differentiate from the simple versus complex? So here, here you can see here that these are the, some example of the fresh tears or on tears. So they comprising of the CMC, HPMC generally we call, and another like a tonicity adjustment like sodium chloride or the pH modifying or pH adjustment, sodium chloride, uh, hydroxide or the HCl. So these are only because they are uh, containing of 
for the product eye drop has been composed by only one or two three ingredient only and they simply made it in a one or two unit operation so there is a no problem to create uh, maintain so many quality attributes or the quality target product however another side if we talk about the complex product the complex product for example of the durajol one example it's having the very very critical aspect so many uh, critical attribute we need to be maintained for example of in that case diphenylpropionate ophthalmic emulsion 0.05 so this is the rld from the elcon another example of like elastasis that is a cyclosporine base one another example of simringa that having a fixed dose combination so you only, do not need to be only the maintain of one apis uh, attribute we have to be cover of another apis then all the criti critical attributes has to be in aligned with the rld that in case of a gender if we talk about gender coder in case of the uh, nda also we need to be develop we need to be uh, identify the all cqs and along with that they are involved in a multi unit operation they, they, they we can't manufacture or fabricate in a single or two container they have been applied by the different technologies like for example micro this durajol has been generally prepared by the microfluidics technologies so that's a simple uh, exam uh, differentiate between the gen, uh, simple versus complex now coming to the gender product either the gender product they may be come in the complexity they may be come in the non complex also we need to be fabricate we need to be so the bioplex for the complex as well as non complex initially by taking the approval of the q1 and q2 similarity and sameness in that case we need to be use the reverse engineering that could be helpful for q1 q2 and q q3 uh, sameness so if we talk about the product development in generally complex where i saw that the simple as well as the complex so complex product development they have been involved they first if we talk about the complex api the api itself having the uh, so many characteristics that we need to be take care for example of the the apis like a peptides or for example of the some peptide like a octreotide peptide kind of that so the other like a, that may be fall into the other uh, formulation also so that's the one complex doses form like two or more in, by implying of using of the liposome colloidal formulation dispersion as well as the emulsion as well as the suspension emulsion and suspension are also fall into the very complex doses form in ophthalmic product development entire uh, world are facing to develop of the uh, challenging associated with the suspension emulsion and the liposomal product in ophthalmic complex doses form for another like complex route of delivery like example of we had develop of some kind of the gel that based on to the uh, in situ gel complex or the like the cyclosporin based emulsion like that so these are related with the uh, complexity with in that or another one we can talk about the root of uh, in this uh, like intravitreal where we need to be give it to the uh, correct amount of the drug by applying very very precisely to the vitreous uh, region so that's what another new era is like a Drug, uh, we talk about the medical device drug combination. So that's the one in that auto injector that may be useful. Intravitreal that has to be useful for the delivery of the medicament into the vitreous region directly. So these are the all other complex product development and their associated parameters along with these some examples. So in that way we need to be take care like for the critical quality attributes. These are the major. Attributes which have been representing for the dosage form or the product like particle size, polydispersity index, viscosity, surface charge, physiochemical properties related to the APIs and the excipient and the uh, their uh, compatibility in case solid state characterization. If the uh, API itself having the prop issues like they may be amorphous or the crystalline kind of the nature or they having the solubility issues, either they fall in the BCS two and BCS class four drug. After that, if we are introducing of new kind of the ethosomers or liposomers, then we need to be take care for the their polymer lipid content and their analysis also. Then we have once we have been developed for these physical chemical characterization, then we need to go ahead for the 
in vitro drug release then after ex vivo permission and we have to be come into the picture of the clinical as well as the clinical uh, trial so this is like complex ophthalmic nano emulsion which i am giving in the durazol so what people are doing during the development of like if this is a RLD and we are trying to develop development the patient has been expired we need to file like either we have been go ahead for the f2 that is available the pack is available 5 ml in a ml bottle that's having the one an excellent drug code that's particularly for this uh, doses form indication this durazol is topically corticosteroid has been used for the inflammation and pain associated with ocular surgery that may be occur after the ocular surgery and it's, it can be utilized for the endogenous interior uveitis that's the uveitis is the part of the eye segment it can be stored the more uh, i can say it the man to information which is available on the reviews once you will go on the us fda website you can find out that this the different reviews like chemical reviews uh, chemistry reviews pharmacology reviews and micro wherever they have mentioned this component what the component is in, in their durazol so diflumin that is the active ingredient along with the percentage weight in volume they have not disclosed the weight in mg per ml so that's the hidden part of that one you can see in the line they have been done it so it comprising of as emulsified polysorbitic tea, that's tuinity glycerin twin tonicity in the 2.2 percent sorbic acid preservative as a preservative uh, mostly we, uh, benzyl corneum chloride we have been used uh, as a preservative but here they have been used the sorbic acid sodium acetate in a anhydrous form boric acid sodium edta as a stabilizer castor oil it's uh, as a oil phase the maximum percent five percent and wfi and sodium hydroxide that the ph adjustment so this is the information we can get it from the usfda directly and after that because these kind of the information is helpful to get the approval of q1 and q2 so that's a very critical if we are uh, uh, developing of any genetic product so first we need to be go take the approval via q1 and q2 from the usfda if we are targeting the us market so one more information you can see i'm just clicking here the draft guidance the detailed information has been cover off in this draft guidance what the test parameter two option has been either in vitro or in vivo studies to file it what the parameter to measure it that has to be definitely we have to be so here is the sponsor have been drug distribution in different phases within the formulas that means the drug has to be how much the drug is distributed into the file how much the drug is distributed in the aqueous phase also the labels as the label is always available with the, along with the products but here you, you can get the basic information and all others from the labels they mention it like this diflupinate each ml contain the quant q1 you can see it here in the all labels if you are working in a formulation i had uh, work on this uh, durazol during my postdoc so was not uh, showing up so i had a uh, work on this uh, particular durazol for the usfda we had tried to develop of in vitro release guidance there is no guide release guidance on the in vitro profile uh, from the any regulatory agencies so usfd is able, uh, trying to develop of the guidance for the ophthalmic image another that is the we have uh, seen the utic that uh, fluorescinol acetonide uh, active ingredient has been comprising 0.18 mg that's the example of the implantable device another inactive ingredient polyamide tube pva silicon adhesive and water for injection has been in uh, comprised in this uh, implant it was approved in the 2018 latest one so the doses form and root implant and that is useful for the intravitreal injection so that could be useful for the infectious that a chronic non-infectious uveitis affecting the posterior segment of the eye so as well as it could be useful for 
live is uh, to reduce the IOP pressure and also for the endo of thermally. Yes. So in the Q1, Q2, Q3, I had just explained about the Q3, the new terminology Q3 sameness, that is the same component and the composition as the reference product with the deviation of plus minus 5%. So that's a very important. If we have a 5% bed by volume, we can be proposed with the plus minus 5% in a case of Q1, uh, Q2. And uh, apart from that, we have to show the physical chemical as well as the structural properties in that case, if we are going for the uh, opting of Q1, Q2 as well as Q3. So Q2, we know about that same component and composition as the reference product along with the plus minus 5%. Q1, we know about that. We can get it from the reference product dimension in the level also. The one, one more important uh, things I just want to be uh, tell about here because we, so that would be useful for the academic purpose industry has been taken up this kind of the guidance. These guidance is available onto the USFD website. So that's a very important because it, it's indicated, you can see using the inactive ingredient database guidance for industry. So I don't think so many people are reading this IAD guidance as well as the data has been available on the website. So what this guidance will be useful, like suppose I want to be develop of emulsion and using of a twin 80. So it's showing the maximum percentage of the 280 you can use in an ophthalmic emulsion case. You can use in a like, like uh, other case, like depending upon the dosage form, depending upon to the route of injection. So they have an enlisted one. You can check it out right now or later on. So they mention it how much the maximum percentage of the uh, inactive ingredient we can use as per the, uh, the safety and efficacy point of view. So that toxicity they have been and so that would be useful if suppose i want to be developed of uh, like ethosomes or the other uh, niosomes so we can see uh, how much the concentration of non-ionic surface and we can take off in our product development so there is no regulatory issues so that's a good that would be kind of the helpful for developing or in, at the prior or the initiation of the any product development that's very very important you can download from the man side website at the bottom. Reverse engineering that could be helpful for decoding of the innovative drug products that we call deformulation sometimes, the deformulation studies that would be helpful to characterize the of APIs, either the polymorphic form or the what kind of particle size distribution is of the API it's available in the dosage form and how uh, that would be we can get it from to the via the analysis of the uh, RLD. So one case study in case of the ophthalmic suspension, the, we can know the ingredient API, suppose why, the BKC, they mention it, benzene chromium chloride. We can see it, if suppose the solution form is there, or the suspension, you can check it out, the benzene chromium chloride, how much the concentration we can be used in the solution and the suspension kit. Excuse me, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Sir, so slide is not moving. You are uh, here right now. Your bird file is open. Okay. Please close the bird file. Sir, actually your paper PDF is visible to us. So if your paper PDF will be closed, your PPT slide will be visible to us. Wait a minute. I have not opened that. Any PDF. All the PDF has been closed, but I don't know. I'll just, what I will be do, can I stop sharing and again? Yes, sir. You can stop sharing and uh, again yeah. share. Yeah, again. yeah. Maybe. So now it's fine. Yes, sir. You can slideshow and continue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the sharing information. It might be some technical. Yes, point. sir. Visible, sir. 
yeah so i'm talking about the quantification of excipients in terms of the reverse engineering okay so we are talking about the reverse engineering so this api as we know about the like for example 2.2 mg per ml that has been mentioned in the level also so we can see that at work as a preservative if we have if we want to be develop of solution so the concentration maximum concentration we can get it from the iid levels Sim similarly for sodium chloride to be estimated because it not been disclosed onto the labels or any information the rld in the innovator will not uh, we so our disclose of this uh, q2 value so generally they are showing the api as well as the preservative so sodium chloride diversic sodium phosphate carbopole that like a polymer for the viscosity imparting agents disodium mediated or definitely sodium hydroxide and hcl there is no need to be mention the quantity but here if talk about the 3 to 6 ingredient that we need to be quantify from to the reference listed drug product and we that would be we need to be so in the q1 q2 approval so apart from that the analytical do that's a very important that we call like a dissolution studies that's i had work on this particular so we have a so many dissolution apparatus that uh, useful for the ophthalmic also including of type 1 and 2 the related one microflotai that is very very important you, uh, you, for the re release profile you can see it here the dialysis membrane is here you can be filled it it's a, like a ready device you can fill it in the this one and it closed this is the cap you can see by the pink uh, this uh, green and the aloes one and you can be subjected into the dissolution fluid so that's a closed ready to device flotilizer another one kind of that here the dialysis membrane you can be filled it and uh, closed it and uses another latest one that is the usb type 4 that we call flow through cell like a novel all the complex products not only all, i can say all some complex product that has to be the in vitro drug release has to be determined by with the help of USB type 4 flow through cell. Although it has not been disclosed, uh, like any guidance has been available onto the resolution studies on a ophthalmic. So that's a, we can be so, but uh, the red, uh, why can't the resolution profile should be similar to the innovator as well as we can be so the resolution profile in case of NDA with by using of visa or other. So that's a new kind of the uh, new uh, innovative work. Now coming to the container closure, you can see it, VFS rescues, that's a unit dose container, for example, of the cyclosporin emulsion elastasis. They have been filled in 0.5 ml unit dose container. Another one like a uh, LDP, HDP kind of the container that we call like in case, we call three piece vial body cap and Another one that is the very important, you can see it, you can just imagine Inupahom color coding system for topical ocular medication. That's America, the recommendation from the American Academy of Ophthalmology. They have been recommended to the FDA and the other pharmaceutical industry, they can follow up the uniform color coding. You can see it. This is the one example, like Durajol. There's a cap, body and the cap. The cap is, you can see by the pink color. Why it is in a pink color? Why it's not a black? Why it's not a green or the other one? The body has been in a white color, white opaque. But however, the cap is a pink color. The pink, the reason behind is that you can see it. The recommended color codes are like class, color, and they along with the Pantone number. So this is for the, the cap one. So because diflupidinate, diflupidinate is a steroid, and that has been used for as a anti-inflammatory as well as for the uh, anti uh, this uh, treatment of evitis so the diflupinate it has been fallen in steroids along with it a action of anti inflammatory that's why the chosen color is the pink one so along with there we need to be mention of the moc that's a uh, uh, having the pentone number 197 particularly if we having like another another like you can see it uh, like a uh, this one a job you can see this one the job is comprising of brinjolamide. Brinjolamide is in the carbonic anhydride in it. So that's why their cap color is orange. Carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, their cap color should be 
orange one. That's very important. You can go in the market. You can see it by their uh, calf color itself. What kind of the class of the uh, APIs they are fall into the as we know about the all pharmacology of all APIs. Now coming to the quality by design. That's we know about that has been fall in the ICHQ8 that could be useful for the complex product development as well as for the nano medicine kind of the product development. So we need to be apply the QBD and the OE approach that while the concept behind of this quality by design is that the quality cannot be tested into the product, but it should be built into it. How it could be built it into the it if we have been rectified all the problem during to the product development in process that we call in process product development then the quality definitely build up into the final finished product. So we know about this is a very proactive, holistic and uh, systemic approach that could be applied throughout the uh, pharmaceutical products life size till so they will not be, they would not be reaching to the market. So they have the, with the well-defined objectives, process and the product so that we can be able to reduce up the patient risks. So understanding QBD is similar with to the PDCA, iterative process. And it is a, like you can see it here. Why is QBD? The QBD is we are previously what the people are thought, the general form, uh, generic pharmaceutical industries in case of for the innovators, they are what they are. This is just to develop up the product, they file it the product first. And what the problem or the regulatory agencies uh, identify, they will be rectified it so that the file product first line letter so that's one major amendment that we can be do it during to the review process once we file the dossier also or they could be lead up to the exhibit batch we need to be date so submit the data of three at least three exhibit batches so in that case if we have developed for one batch exhibit batch two batch, second exhibit batch or third exhibit batch suppose third exhibit batch has been got failure so that's why we got the problem so like we need to be work on revise it, the formulas and all these things. So it will be taking off a longer time. So that's why the QBD kind of the approach has been come in the picture. I mean the picture. So we need to be work it down step by step throughout to the uh, entire product development. So it can be lead it to ensure high level of assurance, product quality, so that the product has been improved. Even the process design and understanding, we can be do it and monitor at the uh, during to the preliminary as well as a during the in process process avoid regulatory compliance problem definitely we can be save off the time so it would be lead to cost saving for pharmaceutical industry and the product has been reached into the market without any problem and definitely it could be helpful for elimination of the potential compliance accent to the company also these are the step by step we had to be do till to the product has been commercialized so this is like if we had uh, talked about the quantity quality target product profile components suppose why that we have been identified the basic the all quality target product at the early stages also secures that is also a subset of the quality target product profile we need to identify the task like identification test is not kind of we we consider in a CQS, we need to identify like the critical quality, like for example, of essay of APIs. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, slide is not moving right now. Again? Yes, sir. Now? No, sir. You can upload again, no problem. Yeah, definitely. Okay, sir, it is connected. Yeah. So those are the basic aspects which I had covered about the ophthalmic product, including of uh, complex 
as well as the nano medicine now i'm just moving off some case studies which i my lab is currently working on you can see this is the one case study that i am talking about the latest one 2023 so first uh, projects we have been complete on the development and evolution of modified nanoparticle for fungal keratite this is the group which is students uh, jrf and srf are working on uh, are worked on this one and we had success uh, published into pharmaceutics uh, mdpi journal that's uh, more than 6.5 that the preparation and uh, that could be the aim of this uh, project is to compare of the modified kytosine nanoparticle as well as uh, the sodium alginate coated one so that the kytosine we call like a muco adhesive nanoparticles and that we has been converted into the mucus penetrating by coating of the sodium alginate so that the comparison between of muco adhesive as well as the muco penetrating so you can see it here how they these muco adhesive nanoparticle muco adhesive means that the kytosine nanoparticle that has been loaded with the voriconazole for treatment of fungal keratitis so that could be useful for crossing up by applying of the paracellular transport pathway so in that one we have been see these are the physiochemical properties by the sam and tam of both muco adhesive as well as of the muco penetrating this is the head cam studies head cam that is a hence uh, coriolan type membrane assay which what the aim of this assay we want to be see it how the once we apply of the ir dosage form onto the eye that could be uh, like any irritation as well as they have been any toxic uh, profile or, or not so we had developed for one this one this assay you can see the capillaries on the hand, uh, this handset that's the fertilized one and we applied of the like a simple 0.9 percent weight by volume sodium chloride itself also along with the our uh, muco adhesive and muco penetrating so you can see it here in the case of e e is the muco penetrating and d is the adhesive so c that's 0.1 normal nos this is creating the damage to the capillaries although d and e is showing the safe pro, uh, profile so that's a uh, one useful for the that the product has not been creating any toxic response the in vitro drug release studies which we have been done on the uh, by apply, using of the by selected uh, dialysis membrane and it could be release of the in vitro of voriconazole in a well manner till to the 50 hours usually we have been taken up to the 24 hours in the case of the ophthalmic but till uh, you have to the sufficient uh, release why you can continue it. another case studies which we have been published onto the international journal of pharmaceutics that's uh, investigating the effectiveness of diflupinate loaded pore cell lipid polymer hybrid nanoparticle for ocular delivery so this is the team which has worked on this one and this is in that we have been applied the design of experimentation doe process for optimization of the process as well as the component as well as the ratio which uh, added around this and this is the fluorescent microscopic as well as the tam imaging of the individual particles you can see it how the pore cell lipid uh, of this uh, the individual nanoparticle has been formed this is the one layer that is approximately 10 mm it's clearly seen into the this TMMH and we have found the entrapment efficiency good in the 95 percent the drug has been used as a diflupirinate and we have developed this lipid polymer hybrid nano particles to show the more uh, viability uh, permeability this is the physiochemical characterization in vitro drug release along with the steady state flux and the apparent permeability coefficient and surface area we have been calculated out by using of the cornea from the slaughterhouse. Similarly, for the drug permeation, showing the better life lupinate in case of lipid polymer hybrid nanoparticles as compared to the plant drugs as well as the plant nanoparticles. So here we have been taken up the lipids as well as the polymer. Polymer is we have taken up the PLGA1. Similarly, ATCAM study is showing the more toxic response. Another case three studies which have been uh, worked on the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that is the benzolamide. As you remember, carbonic anhydrase, the pentone number is 
uh, has been uh, showing by the orange cap. So the, we had filed this uh, patent also for pharmaceutical composition on this one, and it has been published. This is the team which worked on this project particularly. So those are products. The more the main thing is the beauty of this uh, product is the ultra deformable vilosome we have been explored. Nobody has till so far has been working on this ultra deformable vilosome. It having the capability it, uh, that it could be having the deformability. And once I will show it here. Hello. So this is the picture how the product has been developed. And it has been showing in the which is one that and the formability and including of uh, the XBO formation and the growth corneum. Expected director sir is there on the screen to interact with you. So my okay, my edited books and these are major publication in two zero two three on the particularly of Thelmic including of IJPs, JDDST, Drug Discovery Two Days, and Pharmastics, and my area that I am working right now in ocular drug delivery, and thankful for kind listening to my experts, uh, like I can say the, which I had worked, uh, so the experience which I shared it, that would be helpful for all of you in terms of academic as well as the research point of view. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for a uh, brief description about the ophthalmic drug delivery from uh, QVD assisted development to packaging and the regulatory aspects also. So I welcome to our respected director, sir, to brief about the expert lecture uh, for the same. Sir, please. So thank you very much, Dr. Walak Dazi. First of all, I am very sorry I was busy in some of the another assignment. So I welcome Dr. Uh, Nilesh Kumar Maharaji and uh, I am thankful to you uh, for accepting our invitation and deliver uh, one of the excellent talk. And uh, as you know that ISF College of Pharmacy started the uh, ISF dialogue series. The purpose behind of this dialogue series to give the some of the input and latest development and we can also give opportunity to the young scientists so those uh, who are doing the work in their specific area they can deliver a talk and this types of the content talk it will be the helpful to the uh, student researcher those who are working in a particular types of the area so thank you very much dr nilesh ji and i hope that your lecture it will be the display on our youtube channel as well as we can also take some of the queries and these queries we can be uh, discussed with you as and when if it is the required and I hope that uh, as and when you are in the Punjab you are welcome at ISF College of Pharmacy. ISF College of Pharmacy is doing the some of the good job related to the academia teaching learning process. I know that we have some of the limitation of the fund but even that our research team is doing the excellent job role in the various fields. So I hope that we can also do some of the collaborative work in future. So thank you very much the organization team for inviting me and provide the opportunity to interact with all of you. And this is the ISF dialogue series is running by the IQAC and uh, coordinator Dr. Siddharth Manji is the, taking the lead to complete the series. This is the 100 of the one hour. So most probably I think 80 of the lectures we have the conducted. And if you can also suggest your friend, so we will also invite on this platform. Thank you very much, Dr. Walak Dazi. And thank you, Dr. Nilesi for accepting our invitation. And you have delivered an excellent talk. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Walak. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you, Dr. Nilesh Kumar Mehra, sir. Thank you, Mehan, sir, for providing the platform. And thanks to all the viewers for, and uh, it is suggestion for any uh, confusion or any question is there. So please put up in our chat box. Thank you. And we are going to.